What is up guys, Swallam here and welcome back to another classic WoW video. Today's video is top 10 gold farms you can do while leveling or how to farm gold for the level 40 slash level 60 mounts. In this video we will take a look at a couple different farms you can do while leveling so you can afford the level 40 mount and the level 60 mount once you hit level 40 and level 60, so you don't have to be stuck at level 50 without a mount. I will try to give as many good options as possible so if one farm is crowded you have a couple of good options that you can go for. Some of the farms are pretty close to questing areas, some might even be part of a quest, so you should always expect some competition. Try to avoid doing them during the rush hours, do them at night time or whenever you think they're available. The farms will be listed from low level to high level, not by gold per hour, and with that being said, let's look at farm number 1. Farm number 1 takes place in Duskwood and is meant for level 24 plus. The mob you're looking for is the Rotted One. These are located in the Ravenhill Cemetery, the item you're after is the Grave Moss. This is actually a herbalism item, so naturally bringing herbalism will increase your gold per hour as you might find some Grave Moss, plus some other herbs while you farm. When you kill the Rotted One, it spawns two flesh-eating worms which has 1 HP each, so just use any low mana usage AoE spell and kill them. These worms are the mob that actually drop the Grave Moss, and these worms can drop 2-4 to four Grave Moss each, and Grave Moss is used by alchemists to make Shadow Oil and Shadow Protection Potion. Shadow Oil can be further used by tailors and leather workers and blacksmiths in various crafts, and the average price of Grave Moss on the auction house is usually 30-60 30 to 60 silver each depending on supply and demand. You will also loot a lot of linen cloth and wool cloth from the rotted ones which can be sold on the auction house or trade chat to tailors looking to level up the profession. You will also get a lot of level 10 to 14 potions which you can actually sell to level 19 twinks or just people leveling. Feel free to kill any other mob in this area as well as they can drop level 19 twink items like feet of the lynx. Farm number 2 takes place in Stone Talon Mountains and it's also meant for level 24 plus. The mob you're looking for is the Burning Ravager and the Burning Destroyer, and the main item you're looking for is the Elemental Fire, which is a rare ingredient used in crafts like Fire Protection Potion, Cloak of Fire, Robe of Power, and a lot more. It's probably most needed for Fire Protection Potions though, and usually has a pretty high demand. The price for these can go as far as 1-5 to five gold each, depending on supply and demand. Elemental Fire has a 5% chance to drop from these mobs, but there isn't really any other drops that helps you get a sustainable gold per hour in this farm. If you want a more safe farm, kill a couple of harpies nearby for some cloth that you can sell in the auction house or in trade chat to get some consistent gold per hour. The overall mob density in this farm is pretty good, so you should be able to get some pretty good experience, and you should always have some mobs available to kill. However, most of these mobs will be harpies, not elementals, making it less effective for gold farming. Farm number 3 is in the wetlands and it's for level 25 plus. You're looking for crimson whelps and flame snorting whelps, and the main item you're looking for is a crimson whelpling pet, which usually sells for roughly 50 gold on most private servers. Remember, this is usually bought by collectors, role players, or people who just have a lot of gold. Point is, this isn't something people will buy while leveling or when they first reach 60, since their main priorities will be spells, mounts, and professions, and gear probably, and lots more. But once we're a month or two into classic, pets like this might start to sell. It might even sell before that, but it'll be more difficult to sell for sure. When it comes to farming, there's a lot of whelps you can farm, so you can constantly keep on killing them. Skinning will increase your gold per hour, especially if you're a hunter or a warlock and you can send your pet to kill a second whelp while you skin another. Farm number 4 takes place in the Swamp of Sorrows and it's meant for level 35+. plus. You're looking for Dream Whelps and Adolescent Whelps. Here there's several items to look out for, the most expensive one is the Tiny Emerald Whelpling which has a 0.08% drop chance from the Dream Whelps only. However, the item that is going to make the most of your gold per hour is the Small Flame Sack. This item is used in a couple of crafts, but it is mainly used to make the Fire Protection Potions which will sell for quite a bit. You can either make the potions yourself or simply sell the small flame sack on the auction house and alchemists will buy it. Like the other well farms, bringing skinning will increase your gold per hour, of course. If you're level 50 plus farming this, it is worth noting that you will most likely kill mobs faster than they respawn, and there is also a cave in the, right next to where you kill these whelps, and in this cave you have an NPC that gives you a quest item, plus there's a chest spawn. This chest can give everything and nothing, but it's worth checking. In case you get a recipe, pattern, green item or a blue item, and you can get some potions and materials as well. Farm number 5 is in the Stranglethorn Vale and is meant for level 37 plus. 
You're looking for Venture Co. Shredders, and the main item you're looking for is the Fused Wiring. This is used for a lot of engineering items, and it's pretty much the only sustainable farm for this item. The price for this is usually 5 to 10 gold each on the auction house, but obviously it depends on the supply and demand. There are only 3 spawns for these Shredders, so when you've killed all 3, you want to kill random goblins until they start spawning again. This way you get some Silk Cloth, Mage Weave Cloth, Stranglethorn Pages, random greens, random blues and all of this helps to increase your gold per hour. Farm number 6 takes place in the Arathi Highlands and is meant for level 38 plus. This time around we're taking advantage of the warrior quest to make even more gold per hour and you're looking for the thundering exile, cresting exile and burning exile. These have a 50% chance of dropping items called thundering charm, cresting charm and burning charm which are used in the Essence of Exile quest, which is part of the Warrior Whirlwind Axe Chain quest. Warriors get this quest at level 30, and a lot of people buy them on the auction house instead of farming them. Along with these charms, these elementals also drop their elemental element. For example, the Burning Exile also has a chance of dropping in the elemental fire, making this a really good, but also very popular farm. The elemental air and elemental water sells for roughly 10 to 20 silver each, so if the fire elemental spot is too crowded you should consider farming the water or air elemental instead, even though they technically give less gold per hour, because if the fire elemental spot is too crowded you might end up having more downtime than kill time anyway, affecting your kills per hour in a negative way. So in other words, during peak times, farm water or air elementals, and during sleep hours or less played times, farm fire elementals. Or you can just rush to level 38 before anyone else and farm whatever you want until the spots get contested. The Cresting Exiles also drop a lot of Enchanted Water, which is a mana drink that requires a level of 25. This is good if you're a mana user and you need to regain mana while waiting for a mob spawn, so you can also sell them to friends, guildies, auction house trade chat, or send them to an alt. This is perfect for anyone who uses mana as a resource, and if they're not a mage. Another good thing is uh, this mana drink is pretty close to your level, so the mana drink is actually pretty decent. Farm number 7 takes place in the Badlands and is meant for level 41+. plus. You're looking for mobs called Scalding Whelps. This is pretty much a continuation of the Swamp of Sorrows farm. If you farm that one while leveling, once you out-level that farm, you can start doing this farm as you will be around this level. Apparently this farm has a chance of dropping a Dark Whelpling, which is another pet, and it does drop the small flame sack, just like the Emerald Whelp farm. This farm also gives a decent amount of greens, and you can expect to get some Dornament backpacks with 4 in-bag slots that you can either use or sell. I would recommend using them for more bag space first, and then sell them when you have enough. This is a really good farm, and if you farm only these mobs for a whole level, you should be looking at around 100 gold with skinning. You might get lucky and get an epic drop, which may yield even more gold per hour. Skinning is pretty much needed for this farm, as it will make for roughly 40% of your steady gold per hour through heavy and thick leather. That 40% of your gold per hour is by vendoring these stacks of leather. Depending on supply versus demand, it might even be worth putting some stacks up on the auction house to earn even more gold. Farm number 8 is in Tanaris and is uh, for level 45 plus. The mob you're looking for is called the Steel Jaw Snapper. They are pretty much the turtles along the east coast. You'll be killing turtles and pretty much any other beasts nearby in your downtime farming turtles. These turtles drop pretty expensive trash items that you will vendor for gold, plus they obviously have the chance of dropping gear as well. Green items can be vended, auctioned, sold on trade chat or disenchanted. You also have the chance of getting blue items, most notably the Cassandra's Grace. A cloth headpiece that increases healing done by spells and effects by up to 44, which will be an item that healers struggling to keep people alive might be on the lookout for. It is worth mentioning that having skinning will drastically increase your gold per hour in this farm, but it is not required. I think this is a really good farm because there is pretty much always a turtle alive around this location that you can kill, and the distance to the closest vendor is not very far. In fact, it is very very close, so the downtime you will spend running to a vendor selling stuff will be minimal, thus increasing your effectiveness. Farm number 9 is in Fellwood and is meant for level 52 plus. You'll be killing toxic horrors in the lake of Fellwood. The main item you're looking for is Essence of Water, which has an 8% drop chance from these mobs. You will also get Elemental Water, Globe of Water, and Core of Elements, all of which can be sold on the auction house for a decent profit. You will also get a lot of Enchanted Water, which is the Mana Drink I talked about earlier. 
but the main item that will make for most of your gold per hour is the essence of water, as previously stated. This item is used in many crafts like the Glacial Vest and Alchemist Stone, but the main craft is Robe of the Archmage, which is a mage item that is best in slot for a long time, and is wanted by most mages. It is also used in the Hide of the Wild craft, which is a cloak wanted by every healer. Another reason why Essence of Water is constantly needed is because it's used in enchants like Mana Region, Embracers, Frost Power and Gloves, and Healing Power, Spell Power, and Icy Chill Weapon Enchants. Farm number 10, and the last one for today, takes place in Winter Spring and is meant for level 54 plus. You will be killing mobs like Winterfall Pathfinders, Winterfall Shamans, and etc. Pretty much Winterfall Furbogs. You're looking for a wide variety of items, but the most notable one is the Winterfall Firewater, which increases your melee attack power by 35 and increases your size. This is used by pretty much anyone, levelers, PvPers, PvEers, raiders, roleplayers, you name it. These mobs have a wide variety when it comes to loot, and you will find a lot of green items, even Librams and blue items like the Ace through 8 of Warlords set. Another item that may drop here is the Traveler's Backpack, a 16 slot bag you can sell for a nice profit. Other items you will get are Rune Cloth, Mage Cloth, Aquamarines, Star Rubies, Major Healing Potions, Superior Mana Potions, and Journeyman Backpacks, the 14 slot, the slot bag. You can also get blue items or blue gear that you can sell on the auction house, and the occasional very rare epic item. Another item that you will get that is somewhat expensive on the auction house is the Winterfall Echo. Winterfall Echo can be turned in for something called the Juju Power, which increases your strength by 30 for 30 minutes. So it will be a pretty high demand item. Okay, there it is, 10 farms that you can use to farm gold while leveling so you can easily afford that level 40 and level 60 mount. These farms also work when you're at max level, so go ahead and farm some gold. I did not mention any gold per hour because it's very difficult to say exactly how much each item will be worth on Classic, and even though private servers might be a decent source, you can never be 100% sure the prices will be the same. It all depends on supply and demand. Prices will also go up as more gold gets introduced to the game, either by people vendoring stuff, questing or leveling. Point is, it will probably not net you that much gold in the beginning, but more after a while. It's still good to farm though, since you can farm both steady gold by vendoring stuff, you get experience at the same time, and you can get some pretty lucrative items in form of actual gear or packs that you can sell later on. So they're all good if you ask me. I will make a ton of gold making guides once Classic actually goes live, where I'll include gold per hour, gold per item, and so on, so if you want to know exactly how much to make, feel free to return to the channel after Classic is launched. If you want to chat about anything Classic related, feel free to join my Discord, which is linked in the description. And if you like this video, please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.